All right, welcome. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> okay, to fill everybody in, we did have a little <laughs> bit of an early start here. The teams were very eager to get underway. So we're here, Collegiate Star League. I'm Squid with Hunted, and we have got a match already underway here, one to one. Hunted, you got the teams for us. Just throw them out there. Yeah, so uh, it's going to be Western Washington University JV team. They are in blue. Pulse, Can Man, and AJ. And then for uh, the University of Montana Grizz Varsity team, it is Soul, Vaca Flaca, and Cogtre in orange for the Grizz. And we're tied up at one, so, you know, missed a couple of goals, but really we're uh, just getting things underway. Yes, and uh, thanks to the audience for bearing with us, obviously. Wasn't our intention, but the players were uh, a bit quicker than we wanted to get onto the field. But let's pick up on the action here with the Grizz team moving into the offensive half. Hog off the back wall here. So, once again, going to recenter, but can man. A rather easy pickup here. Will be challenged, though. Moving a little bit back towards center, sent towards the midfield line. And not the best touch there from Cog, and it will look like a push out here. For WWU. Yeah, a little bit slow on that transition actually for the Western Washington team. They had the double commit there from the Grizz in midfield. I thought they could push that into uh, potentially a two on one, even a three on one situation, but they couldn't get it by uh, that midfield defender. So, got to clean that up through mid. Indeed, and they will have a chance to do so here. AJ using that pre flip to get the touch, but can't make an advancing play. Can-Man will stuff it out at the midfield. Gonna try and push this one forward. They have a chance coming up high off the back wall. It's hard to defend, but the shot's just off. A great opportunity there for AJ. And a good way to open up the offense, but can they follow up? They're gonna try at the midfield. Soul does get it past one. AJ going to try and keep it in the zone. I'll trust there from Vaca, and the last defender almost beat. Could be another chance here as it drops down towards mid. Shot, no, doesn't come through. Can-Man can't make contact, and it's touched away. Yeah, close call there for the Grizz. They got a little bit lucky. They didn't get scored on, but their defense has sorted out their rotation. They've they've got good spacing. They just haven't found the touch to get the ball out of the zone. They need to be careful that they don't give it away here as Pulse might have a shot. He'll bounce it off the crossbar. That was the that is exactly what I'm talking about. They need these touches. Their spacing is good, but the touches need to be a little bit better. And not necessarily a bad idea for Pulse, and he will have a chance to make up. He will, finding the right side of the net. Not much the defender can do about that one. Great placement. Yeah, that's a wonderful block from AJ. He gets a deserved assist on that play as well. That's just a, a, a bouncing ball right down to Pulse, and he'll find his mark there. Gets his second of the game. That'll put uh, Western Washington up by a goal with uh, just about half of the game left. We did see a rather quick counter. Up the first goal scored for the Grizz, though. Flocka Flocka looking for the doink, gets it off the back wall, but just a little bit off target. Now moving down the other way, Cammon with no boost, the pre flip, and they make the passing play downfield. What a counter. Yeah, Sol, he gets a little aggressive there. I think there was a miscommunication. Vaka nearly scores on that doink, as you said. If he would have put that in, it would have been a beautiful play to tie things up, but Sol actually takes kind of his own teammate's bait on that one, and Unfortunately, can't get back in time. That puts Western Washington up by uh, two now. And such good recognition by Western Washington to uh, realize that they're going to have that opportunity, especially with Cam that had no boost but knew exactly where he could or could not be. Good 50-50 there by Pulse. will center it, but there's nobody in striking distance. Dropped off to the corner rather harmlessly. Cam Man going to try and keep this in play. No touch there from Vaca, but a double commit there. For Western Washington, no pressure at the midfield for the Grizz, though. No, they looked like they were a bit boost-starved there. I think Cog actually rotated the long way around, so it took him a bit longer to get back to the ball. But you're right, they need this pressure uh, at the midfield line to try to get it into that blue half. They don't have a lot of time. They still need to score two. 75 seconds. As you mentioned, not very long, but still plenty enough if they can get something started here. Not necessarily the touch that Vaca was looking for. A little bit of interference in the net. Cam Man's going to force that one off the back wall, but no striker coming in from the mid. That will be touched off to the side, and great follow-up for Western Washington, and that's really key, is that they're always there trying to make that forced play, even if it's not going to be a particular benefit to them, making sure it keeps away from the Grizz, and I feel like that's what's been making their offenses work to try and keep their opponents boxed in. 
Yeah, they were struggling in the midfield, getting those challenges early on. They, I asked them to clean it up, and they delivered. Uh, and and it's, it shows. I mean, they've had possession for the last three minutes of this game, and they've got this two-goal lead. Might be able to make it a three-goal lead now as AJ in transition. They'll put that in the back of the net. And, and yeah, I mean, they're catching the Grizz off guard. It was a good demo to open up the play for this one, but it comes down to midfield challenges. I mean... You win the battle in mid, you're going to have a much better time in this game. And uh, Western Washington, they saw that, they recognized it, and they just capitalized. Yeah, and that, that honestly was just another instance of that. By demoing that uh, last player, you could see both of the other players for the Grizz were just completely out of position. Neither of them was even in, uh, close to being back in the defensive third. AJ is going to pick up another one here. A little bit for the road, but with 18 seconds left, uh, not much more can be done here for the Grizz. No, certainly not. And 11 shots on goal for Western Washington in this game. So uh, just a bit under the uh, under 50% shooting for them. And they'll take game one of this best of five. Uh, so, you know, good start for Western Washington. We'll see if the Grizz can come back in game two. Again, you know, hate to beat a dead horse here at the end of the game. But these midfield plays, uh, uh, they, they just need to be faster, I think, for the team in Orange. Yeah, we did see uh, some relatively solid pressure early on in the game for the Grizz when they did manage to get onto the offensive side, but that's really the key is getting onto the offensive side. We can see only four shots for them in total, and as we've been talking about basically all game long, their midfield presence was a lackluster at best. So I think that's, uh, you know, we've already come to that, uh, you know, decision is that we, we believe, you know, just having a bit more uh, midfield challenges We'll do them a lot of good in the long run here, but a five uh, five to one scoreline, not exactly boding well moving into game two. Yeah, and just to expand kind of on that point as well, I mean, it's it's not only just winning challenges in midfield, but two of the six big boosts on the field are in mid. And if you can control that, then all of a sudden your team has four boosts to draw on instead of just the two on the back side of the pitch for you. And, um, you know, you can see that, you know, we, we mentioned it kind of briefly that, there was a little bit of that kind of uh, uh, boost game, that boost possession from Western Washington, starving the boost of the Orange team. And uh, that does wonders when you're trying to get on the offensive side of the ball. Oh, absolutely. That can be brutal. Five fresh minutes on the clock here, and we'll see if uh, that boost control will sway a little bit as the University of Montana looks to bounce back here in the second game of the series at the disadvantage. We will start off in the orange corner, however. Pulse pass down to AJ. We'll go off to the back wall, but not much more than that. Bit of a uh, misplay there on the pass. A little bit behind the intended target. But the idea is still there. Not the best clear. AJ will be blocked down. Vaka Flaka having to make a cut rotation in order to get in front of it. But a quick offensive start here for Washington. Ooh, that's going to go in. I was just going to say that the Grizz, they were... A little slow on the defensive side, but they had good teammate support. Unfortunately, the double commit and nobody hits the ball. I'm glad I didn't say that before that happened, Squid, because I would have felt responsible for it. But uh, no, I mean, it, it looked OK on defense for the Grizz, but they give up that double commit. And unfortunately, that puts Western Washington in the lead. Yeah, and we did see a couple of defensive mistakes near the latter half of game number one as well. So hopefully they're not having a bit of a mental breakdown before this series really gets into the thick of things. Only one minute gone, and there's still only just that one goal deficit. And a shot on target here might change things, but Cog gets blocked out by Cam Man. Pass great down to pass. center. Beautiful play. Soul cleans up. What a great pass. I mean, this is a whole, th this play as a whole from uh, Cog Trey right there is so perfect. The shot forces the defender into a difficult save. He follows the rebound and gets just enough power to send that ball down to his teammate on a tee. We're tied up at one. Great play from the Grizz offense. And the thing that you really got to appreciate is when a, when a player can recognize that they're still useful, even when they're on the opposing backboard, it can be a hard uh, mental block to get around, but you are still in a position to make a play. So well done. They're already looking for a couple of interference plays on the blue half. We saw Vaka Flaka trying to get a little bit of a box out on the defensive effort. And now... Western Washington back in the attacking half. Soul actually going to get the first piece of that. AJ trying to get the cutoff, and it will work out. Pulse sends that one up high. Looks for the rebound, but it will be sent away. Third man in Soul is able to touch it out, but slowly the Grizz are being boxed into their own half, as we saw 
for the second half of last match, and here you go. This is a classic rule one situation. AJ and Soul out of the game, and this might bode dangerous. Pulse for the shot on target, but it goes wide, and he can't clean up. Yeah, Contre is actually going to rotate back and get that back boost. That's uh, big now for the Grizz. They were kind of low on boost there against pretty much full for Western Washington. If they can turn this two on two uh, into a goal, that is huge for them. They will. Great shot again. It's Cogtre stepping up on offense. This is a, a big one for the Grizz. And a beautiful angle here. Has to get it around the defender in the air and still managed to get it inside the post. Wonderfully done there. And they will win out on that rule one, the pinnacle of competitive integrity. Well and truly just before the half and the Grizz have their first lead of the series. Now that challenge could have got a lot worse than it did, but Vaka Flocka now for a speculative shot. Not gonna go very far. But the Grizz will continue to push here. So with a tap up high, can't quite get the follow up he's looking for. Vaka Flock into the midfield, but no passing recipient there. Either way, definitely a better push that we've uh, than we've seen out of the Grizz. At least for game number one, they've been doing a solid job of the offense so far. Yeah, I still think they're a little bit slow on the defensive side. This is dangerous, actually, a two on one. Saul has to try to deal with AJ and Pulse, and he will. Good play there. I would like to see the speed picked up a little bit on the defensive side for the Grizz. Uh, but I suppose you could say the same thing for Western Washington when they kind of get stuck in that hole. And we have seen a couple of uh, physical attempts from the Grizz as well, as you saw a moment ago. Almost backfired for them horrendously, but there have, have been efforts. And the boost control has been a lot more even so far this game. A minute 45 on the clock here. Things rather evening out. In the midfield, Can Man going to touch that one off to the side. Vaka Flocka, no contact made there. Could open up a hole. There's Can Man trying to find some real estate on the backboard and will find it. No clear from Cog. You got to make that play and AJ's going to punish. Yeah, your third man back and you've got the back wall coverage duties there. That has to be a touch. No doubt about it. And unfortunately, can't quite do it. That is one of the easiest goals AJ is going to score tonight. So... We find ourselves tied up at two with a minute 27 left to go. And all of a sudden, if you're the Grizz, it's it's dangerous waters. You do not want to drop this game in this best of five. Absolutely not. But we give plenty of momentum to Western Washington as well. A missed touch there. Moves out to center. Pulses in position, but can't make the play. We did see a little bit of interference by Soul, and I'm going to harken back to what I said a couple of minutes ago. Now, physical play is becoming a bit more integral to the Grizz game plan as time goes on. Great 50-50 at the midfield. AJ going to try for the pickup, but does not make any progress at all. Great 50-50 by Vaka Flocka. The follow-up is just off target, but it will remain in the blue half temporarily. Good initial touch there by AJ, making the contest as well, but it will go back the other way. Shot on target here by Soul, a little bit weak. Can Man picks up a savior medal. Final 30 seconds rapidly approaching. This could be a big turning point. Yeah, really late to that challenge though was Vaca. Unfortunately, Pulse had just about no boost uh, sitting on the goal line. He had like five seconds to turn around to pick up that boost and it kind of even things out now as you can see Western Washington starting to move back. Uh, again, it just comes down to the speed of the Grizz. Well, no great opportunity. AJ gets a touch off to the side, but looks like he wanted to make a passing play, but realized his teammates wouldn't be ready. Vaka Flocka now up for the final second shot. Drops right before the goal line, but Pulse touching that one up high. Back towards the center, but no challenger for the Grizz, and AJ wisely leaves it for the ground. Overtime in game two. Yeah, smart play from AJ to let that one drop. It was kind of a back foot situation there for Western Washington, and now off this kickoff, we'll see what they can do. Double commit there. Doesn't bode well, but Vaka Flocka too late to that ball. I don't think the Grizz were expecting an opportunity off of that commit. Shot on target as registered by the system. Oh my goodness, that one's going to oh, trickle wow. in. Are you serious? Talking about defensive mistakes, we saw one earlier, but this is just not permissible. No, it's not that hard of a shot and soul just comes off the wall wrong there i don't think he was expecting uh no touch on the ball from the two teammates he had out in front but still you've got to be ready for that play and unfortunately he just can't quite do it so this is what i was saying squid this is where it's scary for the grizz i mean they were up 
uh, kind of late-ish into that game. They give up that goal, and you you kind of felt like, oh, no, all of a sudden, Western Washington, they're building pressure, building momentum, and if they took this game like they did, now it's down to the Grizz to uh, to win three, three straight games in this best of five, and with the way that Western Washington is playing, sometimes they're a little bit cold, but they pick things back up. They're, they look like a comfortable team, a team that can just even the play out when it co- when it comes down to it. And now, game three is going to be tough for the Orange squad. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I will say I agree with just about every point that you made. But one thing that I really want to hammer home is that, you know, I feel like the Grizz really lost this game more than Western Washington won it because we saw two just, yeah. <laughs> just blatant defensive errors. As far as I that, mean, that's uh, Rocket League, right? I mean, it, it happens, but you've got to move on from that. I, I mean, if, yeah, the Grizz, if they don't give up those two defensive plays, then, yeah, this is probably their game. I mean, it could could go a little bit differently, but um, I don't know. I, you've got to move on. I mean, it's it's happened, and now we're moving into game three. You've got to put all of your focus into this game. doesn't matter what happened in game two because now you've got to win this one. And uh, keeping their composure going to be immensely difficult here in this third game. And then if they can manage to pull off the win here, moving forward will be a bit of a task as well. Uh, looks like uh, we're going to get started here uh, momentarily. I think the player is waiting on a little bit of confirmation. There we go. Got him on the field. Western Washington looking to take this series in a 3-0 sweep if they can pull this one off. Five fresh minutes on the clock. Let's see if the Grizz can pull that composure that they so desperately need. In all fairness, the scoreline much closer than it was in game one, but an early goal here for Camden out of the corner is not going to bode well. No, not the way you wanted to start. I was just going to say I would love to see the Grizz get a goal in the first minute, and now they're going to have to play from behind. That is a great read out of the corner from Canman. Got to give it to him. Wonderful angle to find that one. And yeah, a, a goal on the first shot for Western Washington, not great for Montana. Oh, and they might have another chance here. No backboard play in AJ once again. Look, I'm going to say it. I say it so many times. Open backboard, open them. That's all I'm saying about it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, can't agree with you more. It's uh, unfortunately this time, I think the Grizz kind of got stuck on uh, the kind of midfield because of that kickoff. And I believe it was Cogtray, the only player back. Uh, that's a tough read, but still a read that you got to make at this level. And even so, a read that, you know, hopefully you shouldn't have to make. You mentioned it. Cog find himself as the only man back, a little bit unfortunate, but they got to move on. They got to keep that composure that we were talking about during the break. 30 seconds gone is not a lot of time, especially when you can, uh, they, they've proven that they can score two goals in the last match. So plenty of time to make a difference here. Pick up by Pulse. Doesn't look like they'll be able to continue, but Cog doesn't have much that you can do with that ball either as it'll drop off into the orange corner. Federal shot on target, blocked away. Great backboard defense there. Good 50-50 as well. Locker for the high shot, but AJ will block it away. A great transitional play there by the Grizz. Maybe a little bit uh, slow on the uptake, but did result in a quality shot. Yeah, and it was a beautiful shot from, from Vaca to the angle that he had. He's got to make this play, though, carefully out of his defensive zone. Good, good, uh awareness from him to get around pulse there but yeah it was a good transition from the grizz it was a beautiful shot i thought there was a chance on it if they can keep generating plays like that then they could certainly tie this game up yet the problem remains western washington have that safety net of one and they can play defensively for this game if they so desired We'll see how things develop here as we move into the final three and a half minutes of gameplay. Easy save there for Can Man. AJ will likewise have an easy time touching this one to the corner. Past one. Pulse there for the uh, pickup. Gonna try and get this one to the back wall, but no touch there. Vaca, no boost in the tank, but we'll try to advance. Can Man cutting off that pass angle and a blatant whiff there, unfortunately. We'll slow things down. They're gonna have to move into their own corner and try and reset. Yeah, good ball possession here, actually, Soul. Just maintaining that until he could get a pass down to his teammate. And you can see now it's uh, the Grizz moving out of the zone, although they will get stopped there in midfield by AJ. But I like the idea from the Orange team to keep uh, possession of the ball for as long as possible. Yeah, very important. We did note the importance of the midfield challenges in the first couple of games. And keeping that possession, hey, if you're playing into your own backfield, that's fewer challenges that you have to make at the midfield at all. So it might force the opponents into a more... Uh, 
I, I guess, uh, passive position, so they can't aggressively take those boosts uh, for respect of having to make sure they got your options covered. They still haven't been able to strike yet. Past the half now. No contact there from Seoul. Paul's going to try and open up an opportunity, but things not looking so hot for Western Washington on this approach. Good touched into the corner by Kong. This one sent up high, and again, not very many options for Western Washington, but they're slowly pushing in. And what I'm noticing they're doing is they're starting to stall with one player at a time, and they finally managed to find a spot to commit a second. But right back into the corner, and Kamen is there to line it up. They seem to just trying to be boxing out their opponents, and they're doing it to pretty great effect here. Yeah, this is classic time wasting from from Western Washington. You don't need to score goals. You just need to keep the ball out of the hands of your opponents. And they did that for a solid minute, minute and a half there. And you said it. I mean, you send one guy in, he plays the ball out of the corner, get a challenge or two, look for some kind of offense as that's not what you want to do for the Grizz. I was not even expecting that play at all, uh, unfortunately, but you know, this is kind of the the difficult part of playing that possession style because you're wasting your own time by maintaining possession and not playing quickly through midfield. So you've got to turn any kind of opportunity you have into a goal. And then if you can see it on the backside of that, it just feels like you wasted about two minutes of the game. And unfortunately, I just don't see the Grizz coming back in this one. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fully agreeing with you on that point, and I mean, we talked about having to keep your composure, and I feel like that was one of those situations in the net where there was simply a bit of a miscommunication between the two players. It looked like Sol was going to defer to the other defender, who clearly had a better clear out to the corner, could have, you know, given him a bit of extra breathing room, but, you know, things fell apart there in the net, and they didn't have that composure that they desperately need this late in the series, uh, and uh, in game three here, but 45 seconds left, and, uh, I think I'm about ready to call this one as well. Obviously, we've seen crazy things in Rocket League, but for a team that's only scored three goals within the first two games, they're going to have to score uh, three in 30 seconds now to force overtime and then score again against this Western Washington squad who has looked so coordinated and strong individually. I just don't see it happening. No, especially with the ball in the zone right now. Good play from Pulse just to try to waste even more time. Although Sol, he'll find an opening, but not going to be able to turn that in. Yeah, that's the game now, game and series as well. And something we didn't get a, a chance to talk about, unfortunately, because we we uh, kind of went right into this series when we got, uh, got started on the broadcast. Uh, but Western Washington coming into this one is one and four. They're going to move to two and four on this. And, and uh, for Montana, uh, for this Grizz varsity team, they were four and two coming into this game. I mean... You know, of course, you can't base everything based off of, you know, uh, uh, the the record seating or, or the, the record. Thank you, you coming in. Um, but I mean, certainly a little bit of an upset. I don't think I expected this series to be a straight sweep of Montana. Oh, absolutely not. And I, I think I will say, though, that I we have to commend the Grizz at the very least for, you know, uh, the. They came back from game one to game two was a major improvement. I feel like, you know, they may have just played it off. They, they may have had an off day today because we did see a lot of stuff that, you know, isn't characteristic of these high level teams. And obviously, I, I feel like they, they could have they could very well have made this series go the other way if they had really been playing on point because the, these are coordinated players. They know what they're doing and they've most obviously been playing together for a while. But a uh, great win for Western Washington, and it looks like we will actually be seeing them again in the next series versus Boise State, so they have that to look forward to. Yeah, that should be a fun matchup as well. I'm I'm uh, interested to see if they just kind of maintain that momentum because you could tell as a team they were playing quite well. All three of them uh, certainly are fast and mechanical players, and uh, when they start clicking together, um, you know, they, they give us some, some fun rock league. The only thing, Squid, that I have to say that is a little concerning, uh, and it's not the fault of the Western Washington team, but I felt like they scored a lot of their goals off of defensive mistakes from the Grizz, right? And if Boise State play a sharp defensive game, you're not going to get those same kind of opportunities. And I, I mean, I will agree to you. Obviously, you know, we saw some defensive mistakes resulting in goals for uh, for Western Washington. But at the same time, you know, if you can play that sort of game and get the win off of that, then I guess power to them. I will right. agree that it might be a little bit of a uh, shell shock if they if they end up having to change their game plan pretty significantly moving into the next series. 
but I would not be uh, I would not be too surprised if we saw a little bit of a, a strategy change for Western Washington. But it looks like we're going to be taking a short break before we get that match queued up. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Collegiate Star League.
HyperX is one of the leading pioneers of esports and gaming components and has always been committed to growing the community. CSL is happy to welcome HyperX as our newest sponsor, and their support will level up all of CSL's online and live events in 2020, including our grand finals in Las Vegas. And I have to say, I for one am super excited about that. I actually do support the HyperX gear personally. I love their stuff. Top quality. Yeah, and also a big thank you to uh, one of our sponsors this season in GameStop. GameStop is partnering with CSL in 2019-2020 to activate collegiate esports tournaments online and in person. Visit www.gamestop.com slash esports for more details about their GameStop Performance Center gaming clinics. GSPC gaming clinics are free for all players and give you an insider look at how the players you love to watch dominate the games you love to play. Speaking of performance uh, centers, are you a CSGO or Fortnite player? CSL, GameStop, and Complexity Gaming want to give you the chance to train with the best. Win a four-day trip to the GameStop Performance Center in Frisco, Texas, where you will get to train and play with the pros. All you need to do is submit a short video of your CSGO or Fortnite duo team showing us why you deserve the experience of a lifetime. And lastly, be sure to check out our GameStop Weeklies, a series of community-oriented tournaments that run from November through March for a variety of games, including League of Legends, TFT, CSGO, Overwatch, Madden, Rocket League, Hearthstone, and Smash Ultimate. Sign up today on our website at cstarleague.com. But Squid, we've got one more matchup for uh, everybody tonight. How are you feeling about this one, sir? Oh, boy. Well, I have to say I am rather excited for this one. Western Washington, who we just saw take down the Grizz in a 3-0 sweep against Boise State. Should be an exciting watch. And I have to say, Hunted, like those GameStop tournaments sound uh, like a pretty epic opportunity. Uh, no pun intended. Well, yes, pun intended. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, we couldn't go without that, honestly. With with you and me, did you really expect that? Uh, to yeah, of course. No, I mean, there there will always be the uh, the pun game. The puns, of course. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, honestly, I wish I had more time to uh, game, but, you know, so busy with, with the commentary stuff. It really does sound like a whole lot of fun, and make sure you guys get in on that. But we've got game one upcoming here, Squid. Indeed we do, and we did talk about Western Washington. Are we going to see the same game plan slash strategy for this series, or will they have to adapt to the Boise State offense and defense and midfield? And you get the idea. A lot of things that Boise State can bring to the table to try and gain the upper hand here, and things are rather even so far. Only one shot on the board, but it was rather easily deflected. LC Coro. Bit of a shot on target there. Will register, but Pulse easily saves that one away. Baynock sets it off the back wall. No backward defense, but Pulse is there for the backup. Great communication, and they'll get it away. Yeah, great demo by Baynock on the defensive side of the ball, too. Kind of stifled that push there, and uh, we didn't really get a chance to introduce the teams, but uh, for the Boise State side, I think the player to watch for me in this series has to be Ace Pocket. I mean, you can see him with that CRL Season 2 contender tag, and there's a reason why he has that. He's one of the best players in the collegiate scene. So keep an eye on him and uh, we'll see. I, I definitely think he's he's better on the defensive side of the ball, but either way, he can make plays happen as he's got an opportunity here. Great shot and he'll score. There he is. A fantastic capitalization as well. We can see actually a little bit of a double commit here. Miscommunication for Western Washington and Ace Pocket going to capitalize on that opportunity. About a minute and 15 gone and an early lead for Boise State. Yeah, this is an interesting look at a Boise State team that, uh, you know, has CRL experience as well. I haven't uh, actually seen LC Coro and Baynock play uh, with Ace Pocket before. So this is a, a good first look. I'm excited to see how this uh, series turns out. A unique experience for you and me alike. And maybe actually a bit of a sneak peek for that Collegiate Rocket League season that uh, should be coming up here any day. Fingers crossed for that one. Back to the game at hand. A great demo there. Cam Man clearing up the midfield area. AJ will be able to get it past one more as well. No contact made on the back wall, but might confuse the defenders just enough. Shot on target here, but Baynock gets in front of it, sends it out to the corner and looking for the transition. Is it a good idea from Can Man? He just didn't get the shot he wanted. As this is dangerous out in front, I'll see Coro will make the play. Uh, I'm sorry, AJ on defense will make the play to clear that one away. But 
Yeah, it was a good idea from uh, Can Man. Just needed better shooting, I think, right now from Western Washington. Another demo. Just a moment ago on the midfield line. Boise State trying to prevent that offense from moving up in any meaningful capacity. And it looks like they were successful. We stop out on the blue side once again. They knock up high. We'll leave that, leave that one for ace pocket out of the corner and no follow-up. As LC actually waits for the play. And it looks like we're actually seeing a bit of a passive game out of Boise State. Trying to play a little bit reactionary based on what Western Washington tries to do to get out of their own end. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, again, I, I hate to, to again, beat a dead horse, but I think Ace Pocket has a lot to do with that. It's just kind of his play style. Might as well build your game plan over the play, uh, around the play style of arguably your best player. And um, you're right, it does certainly seem passive. They, they like to kind of hold that third man until they feel like they have an opportunity. And uh, it's, it's kind of suffocating Western Washington right now. And actually, if we look in retrospect, we actually did see the goal, the one goal from Ace Pocket was after a double commit, so taking advantage of that opportunity. So a bit of a common theme so far throughout this game, and it's worked wonders for them so, uh, so far. Also a strange double tap there, but 90 seconds are all that's left. For Western Washington, this could turn dangerous, almost no third man, LC Cora rushing back just in time. And no power there on the shot from Cam Men, pre-flip here from Pulse to keep it in the zone. Desperately trying to stay on the offense. Ace Pocket actually gets Goomba stomped there. Might be an opportunity. Wow. AJ sends it on target. A minute and 11, one to one. That's, uh, that's a nice one for the scoreboard. Yeah, the bump leads directly to the goal, but the whole play starts because Ace Pocket gives the ball away in mid about 30 seconds before that play uh, uh, happened. And it allowed Western Washington to keep the ball in the offensive zone. They were able to finally generate some offense and Unfortunately, Ace Pocket, as you saw there, got bumped out of the way. So tied up at one with 60 seconds left to go. A great response from Western Washington. And truly making use of one of the uh, great counters to a passive and reactive game style is just to keep, you know, closing the gap, making cut rotations and being quick to the ball. So that way your opponents don't even get the chance to make the reactionary play because you're already on top of it. And we might see that again. As AJ forcing the challenge out of Ace Pocket in the midfield, he's going to try and possess here. Will be tossed up to Baynock off the sidewall. See, Koro gets blocked out. Pulse making the great heads up defensive play. And the final 30 leave the possession in Washington's hands. I thought Baynock for sure had that double touch off the back wall. Unfortunately, he just, just couldn't quite get around to it as Pulse has to go up and make a play on Ace Pocket's ball. Great read there from Can Man as LC Coro has to rotate back, but this is going to be close. Tight game, 10 seconds left. LC Coro, great defensive play. Baynock with the dork in the upper 90 on the right-hand side, receiving from Ace Pocket. What a goal. And what a smart play. Look at him take off. Baynock knows this ball is coming. He just moves up the pitch far enough for Ace Pocket to hit him with a beautiful pass. And what a read. That is uh, an absolutely beautiful play from Boise. And Boise State, for seemingly the first time in the whole game, taking the initiative on offense. They they had the opportunity on a little bit of an a uh, bit of an overextension there for Western Washington, but it looked pretty safe up until the point where Baynock got that one teensy tiny touch. I sent it careening into the net. Wonderfully done, I have to say, and especially coming into clutch so late in the game, I, I really do feel like Boise State deserves that win. It was a risky play, too. I mean, granted, it wasn't that risky because Ace Pocket, I mean, hit him with a perfect pass. Yes. But, you know, Baynock reads the play. And I don't know if there's communication there. Probably Ace Pocket says, I got it or something like that. But he, you see him turn up field and instantly he just boosts right into the perfect position. The problem is, is that if he if that pass doesn't come out there or, or Ace Pocket gets challenged, it's a three on one on the other side of the pitch. And you could concede that final goal right at the end. But you can tell that Boise State, they were talking to one another. They knew where they were. They knew where their opponents were. And that's why that play worked out so well. I love seeing those risky type plays uh, when it's a smart play to do. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that point. And I mean, considering, you know, you mentioned it, it was a, an incredibly risky play. I mean, even looking at uh, where they were in rotation, Baynock was so far upfield that if Ace Pocket was to lose that challenge, you're right, it would be a three-on-one. Some might argue that uh, Baynock could have just turned around and 
be that as it may, I doubt considering where he was on the field, he was basically almost in the offensive quarter. There is very little chance that you can get back uh, on a loss 50-50 and effectively make an offensive play so beautifully done to take that lead so late. And now they have an opportunity here in game two to push it on to match point. But Western Washington might have some words for them. They've got a taste. And now they know what to expect. And already a good passing play out in front. They just couldn't put it together. LC Carl up high. Pulse will get there before he's punk. It does get punished. Sent straight back into his own corner. Receiving now from AJ. Shots on target. But there is LC Coro. No trouble. The first shot on target goes to Western Washington in this loop. Yeah, good offensive pressure already from the blue side. You can see them starting to clamp down now. I think they want to play a little bit faster in this offensive zone. Uh, try to take advantage of the passiveness of Boise State by, you know, making them have to play up to their speed. And again, just uh, hearkening back to what we uh, saw earlier on, they did just come off of a win, and there is Baynock. Once again, taken from Ace Pocket. Deja vu all over again, coming out of the corner. Yeah, this is a little bit of miscommunication, I think, from the Western Washington team. I don't, I'm not quite sure what Pulse, uh, what his thought process was as he kind of turned on the wall. I thought maybe he could try to go for a back wall touch to get that, uh, that clear. It kind of just left AJ in no man's land, and he couldn't quite get up there fast enough. But, you know, that's the, the danger of Boise State. They see those opportunities, and they take full advantage. And now they've got that one goal lead. They might get another one here. Shots on target just underneath the crossbar. LC Coro, this time taken from Baynock. And this is the epitome of team play. Yeah, this is a great pass, but an even better shot. LC Coro has to beat two defenders on the ground and put it in probably the only place where they couldn't get up there to reach it in time. So a wonderful play from Boise State to start this game 2-0 as we approach that minute and a half mark. And I have to commend Baynock as well. It can be very difficult to make an effective pass from that position, but he did. He, he made it work, touching it off the top corner. A bit of an unorthodox, you know, passing play, but they, they made it work. They've got the puzzle pieces, and they know exactly where they need to go. Western Washington have their work cut out for them. Pulse can't quite Ooh. put together that double tap, unfortunately. It looks like he was trying to go for the dunk on the backboard clear. But well, they finally got their second shot on the board, and uh, we, we did notice in the last game, Western Washington actually had a sizable shot. Defs in, that's going to burn right off the mark. Posted in towards the net, but not over the goal line. It was a good shot, though. It, it capitalized on Boise State pushing up a little bit too far. They had a two-on-one, but they lost possession of the ball. Might as well just fire that on goal, make Baynock work to try to make that save. He couldn't get up there in time, but unfortunately, the ball just rings off the post out. Western Washington failed to follow up on it, though. So we'll have to see if they can get their offense moving once again. Could be a 2v3 the other way, but Pulse just couldn't quite get that ball onto his hood the way he wanted. Ace Pocket, the pinch out in his center, but LC Coro is nowhere to be found. AJ is taking him off the pitch. Excellent demo. Smart play, too. Needed that to keep this game at least within reach. And it is just past the half here. And Boise State can easily just play defensive, but a beautiful 50-50 there for AJ. Going to force LC Crow into a tough spot, but he is able to make the tough play and get it away. Now off the backboard, Pulse feels side flip, but it still could be a chance. Can man with a pass back to AJ. He's going to need some boost to make this play happen. Gets it. Bowser up high, but AJ, uh, sorry, ace pocket. Going to be too quick to that ball. Boise State easily get it away for a second. Yeah, I would have really liked to see AJ make the read that Ace Pocket is kind of flat-footed on the backside uh, of the post there. He made his back post rotation, but he had no momentum. It's a tough read if that ball comes hard off the wall like it did. AJ could have capitalized on that, but unfortunately, lesson learned now as they still have an opportunity in front of the orange goal. Good uh, touch there from Elsie Quero to play it away. I have to say, Western Washington... An extended stay here on the offensive half, but it doesn't look like they've really had many quality opportunities, if any, so far this offensive drive. And Baynock will get it away. No boost there on the side for Pulse. He will grab it up in the corner, but that control will become important as time goes on. Touch there from LC Coral, redirected by Pulse into the corner. Wayward touch by Baynock. Pulse now shot on target. It's Welling. True. 
man, he's uh, Ace Pocket had some difficulty defending that one. You said he was a uh, star on the defense, but even he couldn't get that out of the way. Yeah, he boosts just a bit too much there. Unfortunately, it was a good a good idea. He tried to to play it back into that kind of near corner instead of risking it across the goal mouth. But yeah, you just can't get his car on it. And that is one pulse will take every time. It was a wonderful shot too. I mean, he hit that hard enough to give Ace Pocket plenty of fits on the defensive side. Thankfully for Ace though, they still maintain a one goal lead here in the final minute. Slow down there by Pulse Cam and actually gonna go for the fake, a good fake it was, but not enough to trick Baynock. Blocks out the shot from AJ before it can get anywhere. Now Baynock up for the shot, actually sends it off the backboard and baits out AJ, and now Ace Pocket for the angle back in, blocked away by Pulse. Cam man forced to make a clear, no follow up by Pulse either, and that's going to be a little bit of a slowdown that I don't think uh, Washington could really afford. They continue. Out of the corner here. A uh, bit of an awkward play, but it still favors Boise State at present. Double commit. LC Coral does use his flip to get a little bit of contact with that ball. These little interfering touches are really screwing up the offense, but this pops up favorably for Western Washington. A bit of interference. AJ takes the final shot. LC Coral blocks it down. AJ oh. for the follow-up. Crossbar it in. What a strange turn of events, but Western Washington pulls through. I thought as soon as they got the bump and Pulse wasn't able to get underneath the ball, that was going to do it. But what a clutch play from AJ. Takes the first shot, doesn't give up, follows the rebound, top shelf and in. Western Washington tie the game. I will say, I think out of all of my years watching and commentating Rocket League, that is by far the most back and forth zero second exchange I think I've ever seen. I thought it was going to go either way at least three times a piece and a great block in the net. Ace Pocket has everything to shoot at to give his team the win. Yeah, he's got an assist in this game. He wanted a goal to go with it. Needed some help from Baynock. Actually picks the right player there. AJ had a chance, but he just couldn't quite get there. Wonderful play from Boise State. That ends game number two. And... It just when it felt like Washington had momentum, just when it felt like they were bringing it together, that's a dagger in the heart, I think, of the blue team. They've got a reverse sweep now. Especially after that zero-second goal. So much effort going into that as well. I mean, it was a, a losing a battle for the longest time there in regulation, but they managed to pull it back and, and like I said, get that zero-second goal only for it to be lost in the matter of seconds due to a bump play in the net, so that's got to be demoralizing. But they did manage to match the shot count for Boise State, although I will note, again, you know, th there was a lot of offense, but I'm looking for more of those quality opportunities we didn't seem to see out of Western Washington in the first half. Now, this is not something you're going to hear me say very often because I am uh, typically in the mindset of uh, responsible positioning, kind of this passive gameplay. I want Western Washington to be as aggressive as possible right now in game three. Might as well try it because Boise State are more than comfortable just hanging back and playing defense, waiting for their opportunities. We saw them catch Boise kind of slow, no momentum, no nothing on the goal line, and AJ was nowhere to be found. He was back getting boost because they're just making sure that they weren't giving up these, these long-range goals. If you're aggressive and you just starve out a defense that's going to be playing very passive, not challenging early, then they don't have the boost to get to these balls eventually once you start throwing them on goal. I would really love to see more demos, faster play on offense. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Not having that boost makes it so much harder to make the cutoff plays for Boise State if you're on that defensive side. So I completely agree. Let's see some great offense and fantastic aggression out of Washington here. We'll see if that is their game plan moving forward. But AJ... A great initial touch to get it around Ace Pocket. Looking for the first goal of the game. Passed over to Can Man. It's a little bit shallow, though. The follow-up off the post oh. and away. Great reaction by the defender in Ace Pocket to get that one out. But, again, we said that they needed the aggression, and they opened up with exactly that. Yep, all three players got a touch on that ball, and unfortunately it didn't go in. Pulse won't be able to make that save. That is probably the worst outcome of what could have just happened. I mean, this should be... A one nothing game for Western Washington. Unfortunately, they get uh, beat in transition there, but it's it's the idea that was good. It beat them. They just didn't have the finish. 
again. I mean, you can look at this one of two ways if you're in if you're in the blue team's shoes right now. Is that all? Oh, you know, we got scored on, or you can come back right like that because you know you have the advantage on offense and a great shot here from Pulse. Yeah, look, all three players are in that final quarter. It's dangerous, but it works against a passive team like Boise State. This is exactly what I wanted to see. So glad they were able to put one in to tie things up. And now uh, there's plenty of time for more high-flying uh, offense. Well, speaking of high-flying, upper 90, not quite there. But the idea is still there. Pulse going to try for the follow-up here, beaten out by LC Coro. Some quick response there. From Western Washington, great pop up high here for Can Man looking for the double tap. Does not make contact, but there's AJ for the follow. Baynock meets it in part on the goal line to prevent that goal against. Beautiful defense, beautiful offense, but Western Washington again probably coming away the victors because they still maintain this possession. Yeah, just watching the boost, I've seen the last three large boost pads on either the orange side or in mid get picked up by the blue team they can't afford to give up a goal here as they had that boost advantage but uh, it's good they're winning the boost possession game right now uh and if they keep that going they will eventually starve a boise state defense who relies on boost for those kind of last minute challenges ace pocket now across the midfield line LC Coral for the pickup. Doesn't make a very advancing touch, though. Looks like they're trying to bait out some sort of uh, Maleficent hit there for Boise State. Great demo, though. That's going to open it up for AJ. No trouble putting that one on target. Great heads up play. Hey, I, I what did we say? We wanted aggression and physicality from the Western Washington team. We got both of them in the first two minutes here, and now they find themselves in the lead. Uh... You know, 2 1, 3 0, 6 left to go, but this is much better, much more confident offense uh, from the blue team, and this is exactly what they need to do to get back in the series. Uh oh, I think you're uh, muted there, Squid, unfortunately. Maybe I am. All right, there we go. <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> As I was going to say, I would like to take a look at the shot count because we uh, I did note that in game number one, it was favoring uh, Boise State. In game number two, Western Washington did lose, but they also matched the shots, so at least there was improvement. At the moment, Boise State only has two shots to counter six from Western Washington, so the improvement has been Ooh. constant and consistent in each pocket. Just missing out on a shot on target there. And the first uh, significant Boise State offensive seems to have been turned away for the time being. But it's past the half, and Western Washington maintains that lead. If this is a big possession right now. If they can score here, give them some insurance. Unfortunately, it's going to be turned around by Baynock. But good play there from AJ. Yeah, if they can keep this ball in the orange half, start to starve them out again, waste time, and get an insurance goal, this could very well be a Western Washington game. Oh, great interruption there by AJ. Ace pocket for the follow-up of the rotation just does come in. No contact made, but the post has their back. But no save needed to be made. LC core around one, but this could be a good opportunity for Pulse. Will wait for the touch from Ace Pocket. Pops up high and wants to do it all by himself. Bit of a double commit there for Western Washington, but it doesn't look like it will punish too hard. Pulse returns to AJ. Off the back wall, great piece of real estate. Can man going for the double tap? Can't oh. put it away. But AJ going to keep this one back in the zone. That demo still still a little bit interrupting the defense, but it looks like things will peter out here for the offense on the blue side. 70 seconds on the clock in Boise State Trail. Yeah, now it's time for Boise to start to ramp oh, up the offense a little yeah. bit, although that shot is too perfect from Baynock. Never mind. Might as well score in transition if you can uh, muster these shots. What a touch from Baynock. Nobody back in time for Western Washington and... We're back to square one now with a minute six to go, tied to two. I feel like Baynock has some sort of like kill switch for I need to make this clutch redirect because we've already seen it a couple of times now. But now in the, uh, approaching the final minute of gameplay and Boise State might try to move this uh, momentum forward into a game win here in uh, what's remaining of regulation. So you gotta be careful if you're Western Washington. You wanna play that aggressive game to try and give yourself the upper hand, but you can't overcommit. Because that will be the death of you in this series. But Ace Pocket feels side flip follow up. And AJ can't quite put it inside of the goal post. Yeah, it's time to not panic if you're Western Washington. You're still tied. You still have an opportunity. I still want to see aggression. I still want to see 
demos, but you've got to make touches on the ball. Can AJ get there? He can. Just in the nick of time before his pocket could finish the game. And Baynock, gonna wish he had that one back, but Boise State still on the offense. Gonna try and push through here. Forcing the pie pop up there from Can Man, Ace Pocket. Keeps it down low, still actionable on this ball. Doesn't get the boost to the corner. Might be a key boost miss. He does get it in the end. Baynock keeps in the corner. Final five. Can Man, no touch made, but will open up the opportunity for AJ. Baynock, the final touch, puts it up high. Looking for a pass off the back wall, but can't get the velocity Ooh. he needs. We drop into OT. All right, this kickoff so important. Let's see if Western Washington can turn this into some offense, try to extend the series. Great initial touch there by Ace Pocket, but AJ easily has the response. Touching back to midfield now, Baynock coming to the clutch so many times before, but can't do it here. That one's off the mark. 150-50 for LC Crow gets the interference as well. Ace Pocket was there. Great communication for Boise State. Pass into center. Baynock has the shot angle. Puts it on target. Gets the hat trick in the series win. You said it. The hat trick from Baynock. And it comes out of the pressure out of the corner. Beautiful pass. And an even better touch from Baynock. Using the, the bottom of his car there to just redirect it by two defenders. Unbelievable series. Boise State, I thought, was going to run away with this series from the first minute, and Western Washington proved me wrong. Granted, it was a three-game sweep. Unfortunately for them, they played hard against a, a Boise State team, and I hope that, you know, going back and watching those VODs, they're going to learn from this one because they really, especially in Game 3, Squid, especially in Game 3, I loved the pressure they had. I loved how how many risks they were willing to take on the orange side of the ball, and it nearly gave them this game win. I think a, a bounce or two goes their way, and then we're going to game four. Yeah, and I, I, I completely agree, and I have to say, you know, one of the big reasons I think that uh, Washington ended up losing this game is because they weren't able to commit to that game plan because we saw lots of aggression, but as soon as Boise State started coming back into that, you could see them start to, you know, kind of second-guess themselves. They didn't want to overcommit. And that's what you uh, that's what you harped on there in the final seconds is you wanted to see that aggression all the way to the bitter end. And I agree. I think that should have been their game plan. And hopefully they can do that in the future. It was a well-played series overall. Even though it was that 3-0 sweep, we still saw fantastic uh, 15 minutes worth of Rocket League. And I do want to uh, say as well, we, we talked kind of briefly too that we've never seen this Boise State team. Of course, we've watched H uh, Ace Pocket in the past. Um, on CRL and things like that. But I really liked Baydock in this series. I mean, oh, yeah. of course, he had a lot of wonderful uh, redirects, but his positioning was just perfect at the at the best possible times. He knew when to take risks. He knew when to hang back, play defense. And when he got opportunities, he finished them. That is the key thing, in my opinion, to being a good Rocket League player. You've got to finish opportunities. And Baydock, I think this season coming into CRL has to be a player that that, that we watch. And I you know I'm just going to echo that sentiment because you know every single time you look at a, you look at a, a game of Rocket League usually there's there's going to be one or two spots where it's like oh I think this player could have done this better. I didn't really have that for Baynock. I, <laughs> it's like every time we saw Baynock it was like oh yeah that's that that's an impactful touch or some great positioning or a great demo, a bump in the net, a boost grab, etc. You know, he's just doing everything right this series. I think there was one instance where I saw him not get the play that he wanted. It was only because it just caught him extremely off guard while he was passing in front of the net. So huge props, and I would have to say that he's probably the MVP for this series for me personally. But again, a valiant effort for both rosters, and I can't wait to see more of Boise State. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, I think that's going to be it for us tonight, Squid. Uh, not, normally, we do three series. We couldn't get uh, one scheduled for this evening, but I had a lot of fun. I We saw an upset yeah. earlier, Western Washington uh, taking down uh, the Montana Grizz varsity team. And then we got to watch, you know, a Boise State team that's always so much fun to watch. And uh, I personally had a lot of fun. I thank you so very much for filling in tonight as well. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure to cast with you. And you as well, my uh, punny friend. I, I look <laughs> forward to uh, when we get the opportunity to do even more uh casting together hopefully in the very near future but uh yeah i guess i'll be taking my leave for today well thank you all so very much for watching we'll make we'll uh catch you next week make sure that you follow the c-star league channel 
you know, turn on notifications so you will get notified every time that we do go live. And we do cover a lot of uh, a lot of different video games as well. If you're a League of Legends fan, I believe every Tuesday night we've got league matches as well. So please make sure to follow the C Star League channel. We'll see you next Wednesday from Work Collegiate Rocket League. Have a great week.